Yes, yes. Yeah. My Let's lords. Begin. Let's begin. Let's begin. My lords. Namaskar and good evening, all of you, uh, honorable judges, honored guests, participants, ladies and gentlemen. It is with great privilege and honor I, Rajat Panda, have the privilege of addressing this August gathering as we gather for the final rounds of the prestigious Dr. Ashok Kumar Mahapatra Memorial National Level Moot Court Competition 2023 on this auspicious Constitution Day. This event held annually in the memory of the distinguished senior advocate and former president of the Odisha High Court, late Dr. Ashok Kumar Mahapatra is a testament to the legacy of excellence and dedication to the legal profession. As we embark on his uh, intellectual journey, we reflect on the values upheld by late Dr. Ashok Kumar Mahapatra, values of integrity, knowledge, and a steadfast commitment to the pursuit of justice. This competition not only celebrates his legacy, but also serves as a platform for the brightest legal minds to engage in rigorous debate and analysis. Dr. Ashok Kumar Mahapatra was born to late Sham Sundar Mahapatra on 25th September 1959. He started practicing before the Honorable High Court of Odisha in the year 1981 and he was designated as a senior advocate in the, uh, on 26th February 2013. Uh, by the Honorable High Court of Odisha. He was a life member of ILI and also was a member of the Supreme Court Bar. He was also an ex-president of the High Court Bar Association in the year 2015. He had written, he had written many, more than 27 books and had published many articles uh, and participated in many international and national seminars as well. Today, we are also graced by the presence of two eminent Honorable High Court judges Honorable Sri Justice Sashikan Mishra, Judge Odisha High Court, and Honorable Ju Sri Justice Sivasankar Mishra, Judge Odisha High Court. Born on 17 January 1967 at Bhubaneswar, Honorable Justice Sashikan Mishra completed his LLB from Dhenkana Law College, started practicing as an advocate in the High Court in the year 1996, dealt with labor, insurance, company, consumer, cooperative, and rate matters, etc before the High Court and various courts and tribunals of the country. He was directly recruited to the cadre of district judge in the year 2009 and he held various posts in that cadre and was elevated as a judge of the Odisha High Court on 19th October 2021. As a member of the bar, he has always been passionate about nurturing junior members of the bar, encouraging, encouraging them to think creatively and work diligently and has continued the same even after being elevated to the bench. Justice Shiva Sankar Mishra's journey from a honorable, uh, from a hum humble background to a seasoned advocate on record of the Honorable Supreme Court of India and finally to the Justice of the Honorable High Court of Odisha is a testament to the limitless possibilities that determination and true grit can unlock. His journey in the legal education began at Jaipur Law College where he completed his law degree. He was enrolled as a lawyer in the year 1991 and became an advocate on record of the Supreme Court in the year 1998. He was elevated to the Odisha High Court in the year 2023. Mentorship is a vital aspect of the profession and he always takes pride in playing a role in shaping the future of the junior legal community. Under his able guidance and mentorship, many junior members of bar have become advocates on record in the Honorable Supreme Court and have established themselves in the legal profession and judicial services. My Lords, we are absolutely delighted to have you all with us. Uh, to the participants, remember that moot court competitions are not just about winning, but about refining your advocacy skills, mastering the art of persuasion and holding the principle of justice. Each argument presented and every question asked contributes to the collective growth of our legal community. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to the honorable judges for coming and gracing us with this occasion. And gratitude also to the organizing committee and all those who have worked tirelessly to make this event possible. May this moot court competition be a beacon of intellectual discourse, fostering a spirit of camaraderie and mutual respect among legal professionals. As we commence this competition, let us carry forward the torch of legal excellence ignited by Dr. Ashok Kumar Mahapatra. May the moot court unfold as a journey of knowledge, wisdom and ethical advocacy. With this, I would like to seek permission from your lordships to start the fitting finale to this legal rendezvous. My lords. Let us begin. My lords, thank you. 
and may the pursuit of justice guide us throughout this competition and i would like uh, to ask the volunteer to state the time limits for the participants before that we will uh, after that we will proceed with the competition my lords Here, yeah, lordships. Uh, <clears throat> uh, AKM uh, in the final. AKM uh, four. Uh, four is the petitioner, and AKM seven is the respondent. AKM petitioner speaker one will be taking seventeen minutes, whereas speaker two will be taking eighteen minutes. And respondent side uh, speaker one will be taking seventeen minutes, and eighteen minutes speaker two will be taking. Along with that, they were having five minutes for the rebuttals round because the whole um, uh, each team has been provided with. Uh, a um, uh, maximum amount of time of 35 minutes so and uh, each speaker is allotted with a uh, maximum amount of time of 20 minutes so they have kept themselves within this margin with the due permission of this honorable um, court the volunteer seeks permission to proceed with the today's evening uh, fine yes please indeed your lordships much obliged yeah your time starts greetings of the day uh council six permission to begin yes please uh greetings of the day to this honorable bench uh council six permission to collectively call uh, this uh, honorable bench as uh, tips yes yes uh your lordship uh, i and my council represent the petitioner in the instant case of monica and chandler versus union of silverland which is clubbed with one code movement versus silverland religious union I'll be dealing with issue number one and issue number two, while my co-counsel, your lordships, will be dealing with issue number three, four, and five. Your lordships, now the counsel for petitioner seeks a permission to uh, move to the statement of facts. Yes, yes. Much obliged, your lordships. Your lordships, uh, statement of facts say that uh, a Hindu trans man and a Muslim trans woman called Chandler and Monica, respectively, were uh, staying residing in the state of silverland where chandler and molika fell with each other uh, fell in love with each other and uh, tried to formalize such a bond of love by embracing uh, their own uh, customs and uh, honored a wedding ceremony but due to bureaucratic hurdles your lordship such marriage was not able to be registered later chandler and monika tried to adopt a child uh, but the central adoption authority of silverland rejected their application and that stating that only married uh, individuals were eligible to adopt whereas uh, authority denied the application by stating that regulation will not follow joint adoption of unmarried or lgbtqia plus couples your lordship later monica and chandler filed a public interest litigation seeking recognition of their marriage the right to adopt and uh, their petition was clubbed with another petition of one code movement which was an ngo uh, championing in muslim rights of the citizens of state of silverland the lordships later uh, several contentions were held by the both the parties where the ruling body of silverland which leaned towards the majority faith which was hinduism showed a favorable inclination towards the implementation of unified legal code and however they expressed their concerns about endorsing LGB, lgbtqia plus marriage due to religious principles and state your lordship here question the validity of chandler and monica's pil while stating that they had alternative remedies your lordship and uh, after uh, that your lordship due to untimely death of chandler which tragically chandler passed away monica had approached the life insurance corporation where uh, sh uh, she was the sole beneficiary of the claim to the insur insurance which chandler had done so that uh, monica can uh, will not suffer uh, any problem on, in the unforeseen event of death of chandler but your lordship monica's uh, uh, the monica's approach to lic was uh, denied and straightforward uh, stating that they did not have a marriage certificate to formalize such a bond your lordship and agreed by the same monica filed a application to amend her prayers prayers and seek a direction to the lic authority to disperse the death benefit amounts your lordship and hence this petition is filed before this honorable court uh, which is clubbed with monica and uh, one court movements uh, pils your lordship if council have your lordship's permission council would like to uh, move to argument advanced of issue number 1 your lordships yes please 
Fellowship issue number one states that whether both the public interest litigations are maintainable before the Honorable Supreme Court of Silverland and is it feasible to implement a uniform civil code in a nation like Silverland. Your Lordship, it is most humbly submitted that in the present issue, the Council will be dealing such issue with twofold arguments, where first, Council will be stating that, uh, stating the reasons for bo uh, both the public interest litigations being maintainable, and then Council will be talking further about the feasibility of uniform civil code. Now, the Council uh, likes to state this particular fact that both the public interest litigation, Your Lordships, are man maintainable. Your Lordship, the council would like to substantiate this particular fact by defining what is a PIL your lordship as justified by Justice P. N. Bhagwati in the case of Bandhua Mukti Morcha versus Union of India, that is 1984 SCC 3161, where Justice P. N. Bhagwati stated that whenever there is a public wrong or public injury caused by an act or omission of the state or a public authority or lordships, which is contrary to the constitution or the law, any member of public acting bona fide or having sufficient interest can maintain an action for redressal of such wrong or public injury, Your Lordship. Your Lordship, to further substantiate, uh, yes, Your Lordship. Even if he is not personally affected by that wrong? Yes, indeed, Your Lordship. Anybody, anybody can, is it, is this what Justice Bhagwati said? I would like to, I'd like you to clarify. Uh, Your Lordship, uh, any person acting bona fide can also uh, raise a public interest. Even if he is not affected by it, by the wrong. Ye yes, indeed, Your Lordship. All right. All right. Your Lordship, the further the council would like to substantiate this uh, particular uh, sub issue by stating that uh, the petitioners would be discussing that locus standi of the petitioners in this particular case and sufficient public interest which is involved in this particular case, Your Lordship. Where it is humbly submitted that locus standi, Your Lordship, refers to right of being heard and the ability to institute a proceeding or bring into an action before this honourable court. And Your Lordship, which in the further arguments, the counsel uh, for the petitioner would be substantiating that there has been sufficient fundamental rights violation of the petitioners and Supreme Court of uh, Silverland being the sentinel on the quiviv, that means the guardian of the fundamental rights of the uh, citizens of uh, nation of the Silverland, has uh, makes this fact very clear that uh, petitioners have a locus standi in this particular case, Your Lordship, where uh, Your Lordship, uh, public in sufficient public interest is involved as Monica is a Muslim transgender woman and Chandler is a Hindu transgender man who represents the interest of LGBTQIA plus community throughout the state of Silverland, Your Lordship. And an NGO named uh, One Code Movement is an organization championing in the rights of Muslim women, Your Lordship. Your Lordship, further, um, there, uh, the council would be dealing with violation of fundamental rights, which was done by the uh, uh, the state authorities. Uh, if your uh, Lordship has the permission, council would like to move further. Yes, please. You don't have to ask for permission at every stage. You can move on. Okay. Much obliged, Your Lordships. Uh, your Lordship, PIL is substantiated by the fact that fundamental rights of the petitioner are being violated under Article 14, 15, 19, and 21, Your Lordships. Under Article 14, Your Lordships, the Council would like to state that Article 14 of the Constitution of Silverland mentions this fact that uh, every uh, the state shall not deny any person equality before law or equal protection of the law within the territory of Silverland. Well, uh, Your Lordship, now the Council would like to state the case of Navtet Singh Johar versus Union of India. No, before, you do that, before you do that, I'd like, uh, like you to clarify again one more point. Which is why a PIL then? Why not a personal uh, writ petition? Your Lordship, uh, this says fundamental rights have been violated, or some kind of a law, statutory uh, benefit which ought to have been granted has uh, not been granted. So why not? Why not a writ petition? Why a PIL? Your Lordship, uh, the public interest litigation here is representing the interest of the entire transgender community. True, true. Whose rights... But the person who has come to the court. She has, she or he has come with a specific, you know, grievance against a particular authority. So why, why a public interest? Why not come to the court and say that, sir, this is the wrong that has been committed to me. Why not you, why don't you remedy it? Um, your Lordship, saying that um, I have been aggrieved, and many persons similar to me have also been aggrieved. So you take up the cause. Yeah, it is a PIL. All right. So I, I would like you to address on this point. 
uh, you are not sure uh, a PIL at the Brother, end of the day is also Brother simply... Mishra, just a moment. I think yes, uh, this is. Can you hear my question? Yes, yes, I, 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 I do. Yes, yes. So I wanted him to clarify this point. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes. Yes. And this is basically what is the difference between an ordinary writ and a PIL? Yes. So asking. Yes. If you can espouse the cause of an individual. Then uh, you can very well file a writ petition instead of filing a PIL. Why have yes. you filed a PIL? That's uh, the, that's the question. Yes. Yes, indeed, your lordship. Your lordship, sir, to substantiate this particular uh, argument, your lordship, a PIL here is filed because uh, the uh, petitioners are seeking a writ in the nature of mandamus, your lordship. This is um, affecting a wider public. It's not only Monica and Chandler who are not able to register their marriage, but your lordship, it is the entire community of individuals. Uh, your lordship, there. Yes, yes, proceed. Yes, yes, yes your lordship. It is the uh, entire community of uh, um, transgender persons whose rights are being violated, your lordship. They are not being able to register their marriages because of certain disparities, which is a bit under the state authorities. And your lordships, when a certain uh, Supreme Court is uh, being the uh, uh, sentinel on the qui uh, uh, is bound to protect the fundamental rights of the city, uh, of the transgender community whose minority rights are being violated because state is not taking enough conclusions for the same, your lordships. Okay. Uh, your lordship, if uh, your lordships are satisfied, uh, council could move further with this. You can move forward. Don't uh, ask for our satisfaction. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes, indeed, your lordships. That uh, we will at the end only. Uh, your lordship, uh, the council of uh, for the petitioners was mentioning about uh, the case of Navteh Singh Johar versus Union of India, 2018-10 SCC 1, where uh, a classification which discriminates a person on the basis of an intrinsic or a core trait such as gender identity ipso facto fails the test of equality under Article 14 of the Constitution of India. Uh, and such classification has no rational nexus with the object of the law, your lordship. And further substantiating this uh, for Article 15, where Article 15 states that any citizen on the grounds of religion, race, caste, sex, place of birth, or any of them shall not uh, be discriminated against, your lordship. And uh, to cite the case of uh, uh, Nalsa versus Union of India, where the discrimination on the ground of sex under Article 15 or Article 16, therefore includes discrimination on the grounds of gender identity as well, Your Lordship. The expression sex used in Article 15 or Article 16 is not just limited to biological sex of a male or a female, but is intended to include people who are considered themselves to be neither female nor male. And uh, your lordship, when council uh, is further substantiating this argument for uh, article violation of Article 19, exclusion of same-sex couples from Special Marriage Act 1954 is also a violative provision as per Article 19 of the Constitution, uh, where act of entering into a marital relationship is protected under Article 19.1a. And uh, your lordship, the restriction of right of queer person to marry is not reasonable restriction under Article 19, clause 2. Now, your lordships, uh, the council would like to further substantiate the uh, violation of Article 21, where in Francis Corelli Mullen versus uh, Administrator Union Territory of Delhi, the court mentioned that right to dignity forms an essential part of our constitutional culture and expressing oneself in diverse forms, freely moving about and mixing, commingling with fellow human beings is also an essential part under Article 21, your lordships. And in Kharak Singh versus uh, State of Uttar Pradesh, your lordship, uh, this honorable court mentioned that life is not merely an animal existence and hence these transgender persons should also be given the right to life and uh, their uh, uh, right to marry also your lordship right to adopt an individual so such rights should also be given to a transgender person your lordships and further the council would be uh, uh, submitting that that there is no alternative and efficacious remedy in the present case your lordship the court in this uh, in is a sentinel on the free weave and writ petition is therefore maintainable under article 32 of the constitution of uh, silver and your lordships further 
uh, your lordship, the council would be substantiating that uh, implementation of uniform civil code is uh, is feasible. Your lordship, uh, as per uh, Article 44, which is the directive principle of the state policy, uh, it is a desired constitutional goal of the Constitution of Silverland to implement such a goal. And your lordship, uh, Silverland is a secular state, and in many cases, including Shahabano Begum and Are the directive principles of state policy justiciable? Uh, your Lordship, they can be harmoniously construed with a fundamental right to be implemented, Your Lordships. I mean, you can seek a mandamus for implementation of any of the directive uh, di uh, principles of state policy. Uh, your Lordship, this issue is particularly de dealing with its uh, feasibility of uh, UCC, Your Lordships. No, no, feasibility, even you are seeking the opinion of the court. Yes, Your Lordship. No, is the court bound to give any opinion? Court uh, is there to adjudicate. Uh, Your Lordship, a court has previously given their opinion under... Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. While dealing with the case, while adjudicating a particular case, the court may give an opinion. But in general, whether the UCC is required or not, whether the, the court can be called upon to give an opinion, or whether a mandamus can be issued, issued by the court, or a mandamus can be asked to be issued by the court. Uh, Your Lordship, uh, courts have uh, previously judicially legislated certain provisions of law as mentioned in Vishakha versus State of Rajasthan, creating a uh, uh, provision, uh, a guideline, set of guidelines for... Uh, there, there, there was nothing there, because there was, uh, it was empty, there was no law. Uh, in fact, Vishakha led to the Sexual Harassment Act. We are not on that. My question is something different. The yes, yes, directive principles of state policy are they justiciable so that you can go to the court and say that uh, such a you pass such an order or pass such a issue such a writ to implement this particular directive principle of state policy one of which is of course uniform civil court yes indeed your lordship uh, your lordship there is a uh, gap in the law where muslim women's rights are not uh, equitable with their counterparts hence to uh, further like uh, uh, reduce the gap you, if i may ask you what are what are, what is the meaning of issue your Lordship. What is the meaning of an issue? You have framed certain issues. What is the meaning of an issue? Uh, Your Lordship, uh, substantial uh, question of the law which is uh, pending before this court. Substantial question of law? Uh, a problem which is persisting in the society. Okay. All right. All right. Yes. yes, Your Lordship. Okay, okay. Sum up. Sum up your arguments. Uh, Your Lordship, uh, in the case of Shahabano and Salah Mukdal, it was mentioned that implementation of Article 44 of the Constitution of Silverland uh, is also is a desired constitutional goal and should be the decisive step towards national integration or hardship. Now, uh, this particular issue would be further elaborated by my co-counsel in issue number three, your lordships. Now, your lordship, the council would uh, like to move to issue number two, which states that whether same-sex marriage can be legally recognized and does constitution protect their rights. Your lordship, uh, to understand the same-sex relationship, we need to understand the nature of marriage. Marriage, your lordship, is an institution that is constructed and not discovered by the societies. The definition of marriage was different for different cultures and at different point of time, your lordship. And marriage has transformed from being a sacred religious in institution to a legal contract, from a patriarchal institution to more equitable partnership built on the freedom of equality. Your lordship, this particular issue would be dealt in a fourfold manner where the council would be first substanti substantiating on a right to choose a partner is a fundamental right under Article 21, where right to uh, second uh, sub issue would be right to marry for a transgender person, then power of the courts to make laws and construing the legislation with international laws, your lordships. First of all, your lordships, in sub issue number one, uh, right to choose a partner is a fundamental right under Article 21, where uh, in various cases, your lordship, like Lata Singh versus State of Uttar Pradesh or uh, uh, Lata Singh versus State of Uttar Pradesh stated this very fact that uh, the petitioner was entitled to marry of whoever she wanted as there was no bar which exists. Uh, I think your time is over. Your time is over. I uh, think we are not sure if there can be an extension to sum up such an argument. No, no, no. Maybe, maybe one minute, one minute. Uh, your Lordship, uh, particularly uh, the right to marry an individual is uh, give, given uh, to, uh, to give to individual as it was held in uh, Shafin Jahan versus Kashokin came that uh, uh, it is a fundamental right to ha have a choice of partner. And your Lordship, if this is contended that 
uh, a person uh, having a right, a person is having a legitimate right under Article 21, there should be a duty of the state to protect such a right, your lordship. As per if we are taking Hoffedian analysis of rights and duties under such a uh, legislation, and your lordship, uh, when uh, taking into consideration the marriage of transgender persons, a marriage of transgender person was legalized in the case of uh, um, Supriya Chakravarti versus Union of India, where, uh, but uh, even after legalization of transgender marriage registration, the state have uh, denied the registration of marriage to uh, the individuals, uh, including Chandler and Monica. And your lordship, it is uh, the duty of the court under Article 253 of the Constitution of Silverland, which gives the state uh, to right to formulate a legislation implementing any treaty or agreement, your lordship. And your lordship, Article, uh, the principle 24 of Yogyakarta principle mentioned that everyone has a right to found family regardless of their sexual orientation, your lordships. All right, all right. So that pretty much sums up your argument. We will move on to speaker number two. Much obliged, your lordships. What is the time limit? Um, Yes, uh, Mr. Panda, I believe, the volunteer. What is the time we get uh, special, uh, given to speaker number two? Uh, 17 minutes, your lordship. Please begin. Much obliged. Please begin. Uh, much obliged, your lordship. Uh, council, council seeks permission to move ahead with issue three. Yes, yes all right. Much obliged, your lordship. Issue three is, does the Uniform Civil Court infringe upon uh, individuals' fundamental and personal rights as protected under the Constitution of Silver Rand, and does it represent an overreach of the state into the personal laws of the citizen? It is humbly submitted by the Council that the implementation of UCC would not lead to infringement of the fundamental and personal rights of the citizens of Silver Rand, and it does not represent an overreach of the state into the personal laws of the citizen. This issue would be dealt by the Council in a twofold manner that is, number one, that implementation of UCC is not a violation of the fundamental rights and personal rights of the citizens of Silverland. And uh, issue, uh, sub issue two is it does not represent an overreach of, of the state into the personal laws. Fundamental rights given to the individuals and the directive principles of the state policies are interrelated. As stated in the case of Keshwananda Bharti versus State of Kerala, 1973-4 SCC 225, the directive principle, the Honorable Court stated that the directive principles of the state policy and the fundamental rights should be construed in the harmony with each other and each other, and every attempt should be made by the court to resolve any apparent inconsistency between them. Moving ahead, you implementation of UCC would create a common identity and sense of belonging among, amongst the citizen of the silver land and it will reduce reduce the communal and the sectarian conflicts uh, arising in silver land also it, UCC is mentioned under article 44 that forms the part of DPSP of the constitution which uh, which entails uh, the yeah, Lord, uh, sorry to interrupt actually speaker number two um, your voice is uh, means not audible properly. We are having certain it is echo. It is clearly audible. Probably there must be some issue at your end. Uh, her voice is Indeed, your voice. Yes, it's all right. All right, you can check out. Uh, moving ahead. Uh, as uh, it's all right with me. There, there must be some other issues with uh, the uh, volunteer. Please try. Uh, moving yeah. ahead, moving ahead with substantiating the issue, uh, K.M. Munshi, as in, uh, stated in the Constituent Assembly debate, that it is desired by the Constituent Assembly, the makers of the Constitution, that their intent was very clear that in coming days, UCC, UCC should be implemented in the state of Silverland. Uh, because back in time, due to lack of resources and constraints prevailing in the society, UCC cannot be implemented. But uh, but now, the it's high time that we uh, that we make true the intent of the makers of the constitution. Also, further in the case of Salam Udgal versus Union of India, 1995-3 SCC 635, it was uh, the Supreme Court directed the Ministry of Law and Justice by uh, law and justice to uh, highlight the government of India, uh, government of Supreme uh, Silver Lands measures and effort towards achieving a uniform civil code. I, I, I'll ask you to pause for a moment. Tell me how is it relevant to your case, to the facts of your case? 
uh, decision, the ratio decided in the case that you have been, you, are, you have cited just now, how is it relevant to the facts of your case? Apply it to the facts of your case and tell me. Uh, in the case of Sarla Mudgal, uh, state uh, what is, it is the clear intention intention of the Supreme Court is that to implement UCC in the uh, uh, in the country, which is also uh, which is also sought after, sought by the petitioners in the present case. No, that takes me to my final, uh, the question which I posed to uh, speaker number one. Can a mandamus be asked for in this case? That sir, please issue a mandamus directing state government so and so or, or government such and such government to uh, implement the uniform civil code from such and such date. Your lordship, a fundamental right of a person is violated every day in in the presence of the authority of the Supreme no, Court. No, 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 you are digressing. We are not on fundamental rights. We are on uniform civil code. You have referred to the uniform civil code and your, your issue is also a uniform civil code and the particular issue says that, that does the UCC infringe upon individuals' fundamental and personal rights. It's the other way around. It's not the fundamental right. You are uh, here to un uh, submit on the point that whether the uniform civil code, if implemented, will it in infringe the fundamental rights of the citizens? But you are arguing on something else. You are arguing, you are referring to, referring to that Mughal decision, which I find uh, somehow, that is why I asked you, how, how does it relate to the facts of your case? And what is the facts of your case as pointed out by your speaker one? There was a uh, marriage between a Muslim trans man with a Hindu trans girl or vice versa, mm -hmm. I don't remember. What about yeah. So one of them died and there's a question of, you know, who's going to inherit that LIC thing and uh, what about their child? The marriage was never registered and all those things. So you must tell me how does the house that uh, uniform civil code, uh, uh, the, the judgment you, on that, how is it applicable? Uniform civil code is uh, sought, after, sought by the petitioners from uh, who are championing for the rights of Muslim women. That is one court, one court movement. No, no, championing for the rights of Muslim women or her personal rewards? Uh, one court movement is championing for the rights of Muslim women. It's right. not based on personal. I'm talking about the petitioner in this case, the other case. Uh, much obliged, Your Lordship. Uh, Muslim, uh, as the trans worry, woman in this worry. case, don't that worry. is. Don't 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 get disheartened by the questioning, because that is what basically you are required to. Do when you appear before. Oh, don't go, don't get nervous. You can argue. Don't worry. Uh, trans the, woman in this. It is the the duty of the judge to ask you questions, so as to bring the argument on the right track. I found that you were di digressing uh, to somewhere else. That is why I pulled you back. What do you say, brother? Mishra. Brother Mishra. Brother. Yes, yes. Then I mean. Yes, brother. I'm there. I'm there, brother. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. It's an come. honor to learn from the bench, your lordship. Yes, uh, the Petitioner in the case, Monica, is a trans woman who is also a Muslim, uh, who belongs to Muslim community, and her petition is has, her petition is clubbed with uh, Muslim women under one court movement, who are uh, sorting who are sorting their rights of not being discriminated in the personal law. Uh, if your if your uh, if your lordship may permit, uh, council would like to move ahead with their arguments. Please, please, please move ahead. Also stated in the case of John Wala Motam, another and another versus Union of India, the Honorable Court ruled in a civilized society the connection between the religious and personal laws is not necessary. Marriage, divorce, succession, and other secular affairs can't be placed within the assurance established in Article 25 and 26 of the Constitution if they violate the fundamental rights granted under the rest uh, and under the part 3 of the constitution uh, moving ahead council would like to submit that implementation of ucc would not lead to violation of article 15 of the citizens of the uh, silver land because ucc is providing a remedy and implementing would lead to no discrimination based on the grounds which is mentioned in Article 15, that is religion, race, caste, sex, etc. Also, it would empower women to challenge the pat patriarchal and regressive practices that's violate, that violate their fundamental rights. Moving ahead, it is humbly submitted that implementing UCC would also not violate Article 21 of the... Where did you get this patriarchal uh, 
rights are uh, or patriarchal what do you say what do you call them patriarchal and regressive practices regressive but, practices where did you get them how do you relate it to your the your the facts of your case uh in the facts of the case the state of silver land is described it, uh, that the patriarchy prevails in such state okay and hence the muslim laws are violative and to do the uh, women of the society okay okay moving ahead a council would like to humbly submit that uh, non -implement, uh, implementation of ucc will not lead to violation of article 21 as in the case of manika gandhi versus union of india the honorable bench held that right to fair uh, right to fair hearing should be available to all but if there are no right if there are no laws backing up the rights of muslim women how would how would they can uh, how can they challenge their rights how can they claim their rights so implementation of UCC will, will put them in equal footing and hence give them equal rights of fair hearing. Moving on to the second leg of the argument that uh, there would be non-interference in the state in the personal laws. Article 25 and 26 are subjected to the other fundamental rights present under part three of the constitution. Also, as in the case of Shah Banu Begum versus Muhammad Ahmad Khan, and in the case of Shaira Banu versus Union of India, Supreme Court has time and again entered into the personal law, in the, in the ambit of personal law, to ensure that no laws under such laws violates the fundamental rights of a woman. Also, in the case of Sabri Mala, uh, Sabri Mala case, that is Indian Young Lawyers Association versus State of Kerala, 2019 11 SCC 1. D Justice D.Y. Chandra stated that customs usages and personal laws have a significant impact on the civil status of individuals those activities that are inherently connected with the civil status of individuals cannot be granted constitutional immunity merely because they have they may have some associational features with which have a religious nature to immunize them from the constitutional security is to deny the primacy of the constitution which is contested in the present state which is uh, which is also contended in the instant case as well uh, if your uh, if your or lordships may permit, council would like to move towards issue four. Uh, okay. much you, obliged, uh, you said something about Shavano and you straight away went to Sabri Mala. But in between, I think there's a there's another case, uh, Daniel Latifi, uh, who deals with uh, women's uh, Muslim women's uh, you know uh, rights, particularly divorced Muslim women's rights. Probably the same thing as was decided in Shabano. Have you heard of it? Daniel Latifi. Yes, Your Lordship. Yes. Anyway, all right. Uh, moving ahead with issue four. Yes. Uh, issue four is Is the refusal to give adoption for LGBTQI couple is a violation of their right? This issue would be dealt in a threefold manner by the uh, council. The first, the refusal to give adoption to LGBT a couple LG uh, that the adoption regulations exceeds the scope of juvenile justice act second regulation 5 sub clause 3 of uh, adoption regulation violates article 14 of the constitution and regulation sub clause 3 of the adoption regulation violates article 15 of the constitution uh, Ju juvenile justice act give power to central adoption resource authority to come up with a regulation to promote the best best interest of the child who would be given up for adoption the regulation is named as the adoption regulations the uh, the usage in in juvenile justice act the the legislature does not qualify the word spouse that is mentioned under section 57 which states that uh, uh, persons who can adopt the word spouse is not qualified with the word married or unmarried. But when we look into the adoption regulations, the executive authority have stated that uh, couples in a stable marital relationship can adopt. Such addition and such addition of a qualification clearly exceeds the scope of Juvenile Justice Act. Also, usage of the uh, uh, also, usage of the word stable is arbitrary as there is no clear yardstick provided by the 
uh, executive. The yardstick you to measure the stable relationship is two years of stable marital relationship. Your Lordship, Council would like to explain this with an example. If a if a person is if the couple is married for two years and has been in a stable marital relationship, that does not ensure that they will al always they can be able to provide the best. Uh, they can be able to promote the best interest of the uh, of the child they adopt because what if after some years there there is a problem and the marriage is disrupted and there are no research backing up that two uh, that a person in a queer relationship is a bad influence on the child as well moving ahead with the second leg of the argument that is regulation 5 sub clause 3 of the adoption regulation violates article 14 of the constitution to pass this uh, to pass the test of article 14 as stated in the state of west bengal versus anwar ali sarkar uh, regulation has to have an intelligible differentia and such differentia has to have a rational uh, rational nexus with the object sought by the law here there exists an intelligible differentia that is a married couple and an unmarried couple but there the object sought by the law here is to promote the best interest of the child to be given up for adoption. Here, the differentia does not have a ras rational uh, nexus with the object sought because, uh, again, your lordship, there is, uh, as already explained, as already substantiated by the council, that there is no research if a person. A heterosexual uh, couple in a in a marriage can be a better parent than the queer people whose marriage rights are still not recognized. Moving ahead with the third leg of the argument, uh, that such regulations is violative of Article 15 of the uh, of uh, Article 15 of the Constitution because a uh, queer community is violated against the very intrinsic or core trait that is gender identity or lordship this ipso facto fails the test of equality as under article 15 uh, as given in the case of nafte singh johar also uh, law cannot make assumption about good and bad parenting based on sexuality of individuals the room for such assumptions perpetuate a stereotype based on sexuality that only heterosexuals are good parents and all other parents that is queer couple would be a bad influence of on the child if you allow lordship may permit the council would like to move ahead with the uh, with issue five yes yes Much right. like your lordship. issue so, five is out so quickly uh, issue 5 is, does the denial of LIC claim to Monica based on the absence of a marriage certificate infringe upon her rights and entitlements as designated by Chandler? Before this you same... I'll ask you a little bit, uh, I want to understand this issue. What was the fact? The LIC denied uh, the, uh, refused the claim on the ground that you didn't have a marriage certificate? Yes, Your Lordship. Uh, normally, the LIC or even banks, they give it to the person who is the nominee. Yes, Your Lordship. I think there's a decision also to that effect, PK Vasi Reddy versus Rami Reddy or something like that. I remember. So here, what has happened? Here, the fact is that it was uh, only on the ground that she does not have a marriage certificate to back the claim that she's a she's the yes. wife. Okay. Yeah. Though Monica was a uh, uh, was. Uh, what? Though Monica was made the sole uh, beneficiary of such insurance policy, she was denied on the on the grounds that she did not have a valid marriage certificate. Uh, moving ahead with the so with the arguments advanced it is it is a clear rights of the violation of monica that lic denied the uh, claims of monica that she does not have a valid marriage certificate the same issue would be dealt by the council under in twofold manner that first lic falls under the definition of state and second uh, and second the acts of lic is a clear violation of the fundamental rights of the nominee that is monica in the case of Sukhdev Singh versus Bhagat Ram, this honorable court has clearly stated that life insurance corporation along with ONGC and the finance corporation falls under the definition of state. Uh, Your Lordship, Council would like to seek permission for an extension of two one minutes. More, one more minute, but why state? Has the LIC denied uh, that it is uh, not a state? Is that the issue here? The issue uh, is to say so. Uh, Life Insurance Corporation of India, it is not a state within the meaning of Article 12. Has it been pleaded or argued by the LIC on the other side? Uh, no, Your Lordship. Uh, just so that we can uh, ask for our, uh, to ask for our rights in front of Supreme Court, Council would like to prove that the authority we are 
uh, we are putting this is a state including definition of state but why i would like to know why supposing you file a case against the government any department of the government do you have to first prove that it is a state within the meaning of article 12 some some thing are taken unless it is so supposing there's an argument counter argument from the lic that we are not state so the data application is not maintainable against us has it been has it been the case here uh no your lordship so you may skip over that you come to the your uh, issue that you have framed quickly quickly indeed your lordship that's an honor to learn from the bench uh not providing of such uh, benefits is a violation to the uh, fundamental rights of monica in section 39 subsection 1 of the insurance act of 1938 it is clearly stated that nominations by the policy holder which states that the holder of a policy of life insurance on his own life may when affecting the policy or at any time before the policy matures for payment nominate the person or persons to whom the money secured by the policy shall be paid in the event of the death and the same has been upheld in the amendment act of 2015 of the insurance act here Chandler has clearly nominated Monica as the sole beneficiary of such policy if in the in case of death of Chandler. But what is nominee? The word is nominee actually. Yes, your lordship. Uh, here in the case, uh, LIC has acted arbitrarily by asking Monica to produce a marriage certificate, and then only they will uh, give her the rights of claim. Is a clear violation of Article fourteen of Monica. Because state has acted arbitrarily, as also upheld in the case of E.P. Roy Appa versus State of Tamil Nadu, that if state, if the any, if states act arbitrarily, it's a violation of Article 14 of the Citizen. Moving ahead, in the case of Gurmail Singh versus National Insurance Company Limited, it was stated that insurance insurance company has become too technical while settling the claim and has acted arbitrarily in doing so, as the appellant was asked to furnish document which was beyond the control of the appellant to procure and furnish. Here, Monica is a transgender person in the state of Silverland whose husband has already died. She cannot, in any force, produce such document. Asking her to produce such document is a clear violation of our Article 21, as also substantiated substantiated in the case of Gurmail Singh. Moving ahead, it is yeah, all. That, that should be all. That should be. That should be enough. Thank you. Thank uh, you for your arguments. If well, the bench well, may well, permit, well. council would like to move ahead with the prayer for petitioners. Yes. Much obliged, your lordship. Wherefore, in the light of light of facts stated, issues raised, arguments advanced, and authorities cited, it is most humbly submitted, prayed, and implored before the Honorable Supreme Court of Silverland that it may be graciously pleased to adjudge and declare that both the PIL are maintainable before the Honorable Supreme Court and it is feasible to implement UCC. Same-sex marriage should be legally recognized. Implementation of UCC as it does not infringe upon individuals' fundamental and personal rights. Refusal to give adoption for LGBT, LGBTQIA plus couple a violation is a violation of their right. The denial of LIC claim to Monica based on the absence of a recognized marriage certificate infringe upon her rights and entitlements as designated by gender and or pass any order, writ or direction as the Honorable Sup Honorable Court deems fit in the interest of justice, equity, and good conscience. For this act kindness, act of kindness, the petitioner shall duty bound forever pray. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the submission. I think we have to move on to the next speakers. Yeah, for the respondents, probably. Yes, Mr. Panda. Indeed, your lordship. Indeed, your lordship. Uh, speaker so one will be taking 18 minutes, uh, 17 minutes, and speaker two will be taking 18 minutes. Very good, very good. Yes. Speaker one, uh, council seeks permission of the court to proceed. Yes, yes. Please. Uh, the council for petitioner seeks uh, uh, seeks permission of the court to collectively refer the court as your honours. Yes. May it please the honourable court, the council here is representing respondents in the case of Chandler, Monica, and another versus Union of Silverland in response to the PIL that has been filed under Article Thirty Two by the petitioners. If the honourable court is well versed with the facts of the case, the council. Do you have a time limit? Yes, 17 eight minutes for the yes. first speaker and 18 minutes for the second speaker. Uh, okay. Indeed, indeed, your lordship. 17 minutes for the first speaker and 18 minutes for the speaker too. Okay. And 5 minutes for okay. the review too. Yes, very good. Uh, the council seeks per, uh, permission to directly proceed with the issues if the honorable court is well versed with the facts. Please, please. 
the, uh, the counseling one will be dealing with issue one and two, and my co counsel will be dealing with issue three, four, and five successfully. The council seeks permission to proceed with the arguments of the case. Yes, yes. You don't have to seek permission at every stage. You can move Indeed, on. Your Lordship. The issue one that we are dealing with today is relating to the maintainability of the PIL that has been filed by Chandler, Monica, and along with PIL that has been filed by One Court uh, Movement, that is an organizing supporting the Muslim women. In the present case, the council for respondents humbly submits that, that both the PIS that has been filed are not maintainable. And along with that, there is not a feasible, it is not feasible to implement uniform civil code in the country like Silver Lab. The respondent will be contending the issue under the two uh, four pole arguments. Firstly, the council will be dealing with the PIL that has been filed by one, uh, Monica and Chandler. And second, uh, dealing with PIL that has been filed by one core movement. And thirdly, non feasibility of the uniform civil code. Dealing with the issue relating to whether the PIL that has been filed by Monica and Chandler, the council submits that it is not maintainable. It is contending on the basis that what Article 32 states and why a PIL should be entertained that has been stated that Article 32 has been framed in the Constitution to provide appropriate relief. The petitioners will be entitled to appropriate relief if there is a violation of fundamental rights in per context. Until and unless there is a religion of fundamental rights approaching before the Honorable Supreme Court is not permitted under Article 32. If the petitioners was to contend, as per Section 15 of CPC, as the matter in the present case is related to same-sex marriage and in relation to Uniform Civil Court, that both are the civil matters. Considering Section 15 of Civil Procedure Code, which states that when filing a matter, a court of lower grade having the competent jurisdiction should be approached. Low grade, lowest grade. Lowest grade, lowest grade having the competent jurisdiction or options as per section 15 of civil procedure code thereby directly approaching the supreme court filing a pil is not for the su sufficient interest let oh, no but, but, but if if the grievance relates to violation of fundamental rights can the civil court adjudicate upon it uh, no uh, lordships uh, civil court is not basis on for the fundamental rights but in the present court uh, case, the matter is written to Chandler and Monica and the recognition of their marriage. Recognition of marriage is relating a civil matter. Also, along with that, the implementation of uniform civil code is a matter relating to civil issues. They can approach a Supreme Court if there would be a violation of fundamental rights. Until and unless there is a violation. In the successive argument, the council will prove that there is no violation of fundamental rights in the present case. Moving ahead with the uh, first, uh, what uh, to substantiate that Justice Khalid's argument has to be uh, uh, since has been taken in Sachidanand Pandey versus State of Bengal, West Bengal, in page 14 of the memorial. I would like to quote that today, public spirited litigants search to court to file cases in profession profusion under the attractive name. They must inspire confidence in courts and among the public. They must have to be above suspicion. I will be no second to none to help when such help is required. But this done does not mean that the doors of this courts are always open for anyone to walk in. It is necessary to have some self-imposed restraint in the public interest litigant. This is all uh, Khalid also states that if courts do not restrict the free flow of such cases in the name of public interest litigation, the traditional litigation will suffer. To file a PIL, there must be a substantial question of law along with the question of law of general public importance. Here in the present case, the pub, uh, Chandler and Monica are related to their personal issues in the state of recognition of their marriage. There's nowhere involvement of everyone to be taken. Also, to file a PIL, there's a uh, state that they must take a consideration of everyone in that state. Fact sheet in nowhere contested that anyone other than Chandler and Monica approached before the Supreme Court for the recognition of their marriage. There is such no such alignment along to that. My honorable counsels for petitioners has also played reliance in uh, 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 in the case of uh, Kadak Singh case. Uh, they have placed a reliance in whether they where they stated that Supreme Court has recognized Article 21 and right to privacy. There is no reliance to that. But along with that, they said that Supreme Court in their judgment has contended that right to marriage was also given considered. Kharak Singh case in no way is reliance to 
right to marriage in person the facts of that case are related to the uh, police uh, visit in the case of habitual offenders and in that case the supreme court has decided along with the right to privacy matters that has to be regarded in article 21 it is nowhere regarded in the case of right to marriage in the present case moving on to the violation of fundamental rights that has been contested if there is a violation of fundamental rights the petitioners may have humbly approached the supreme court but in the present case neither article 14 neither article 15 neither article 19 and neither article 21 which the petitioners contends are violated has been violated to substantiate that article 14 talks about right to equality no denies to that everyone should be have given the right to equality placing upon the reliance that they have given uh, petitioners has contended upon nafti singh johar ke whether they have their yeah. the, where they have contested that sexual recognition was given a consideration and the, it must be recognized but nafti singh johar case in no way recognized same sex marriage it was a case of recognition given to same sex relationship interpreting what is same sex relationship justice bhart in the very recent case of supreo versus uh, union of india has uh, come upon what uh, same sex relationship means and in interpreting that in that very way in the para 52 of the judgment of by s r bhart uh, justice s r bhart uh, uh, justice s r bhart has contested what it is he said while we agree that there is a right we will what which will be characterized as right to relationship to avoid confusion we squarely recognize it to fall within article 21 as already recognized in the aforesighted case the right to relationship here includes right to choose a partner cohabit and enjoy physical intimacy it nowhere includes right to marry and the legal recognition of marriage thereby placing reliance on nafteer singh johar case is no way substantiating the case of petitioners along with that this that there is a violation of article 15 in that regard article 15 talks about uh, discrimination in relation to sex gender religion caste creed color but there is no way written that there should be discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation in that regard thereby article 15 is also not violated article 19 that they are considering Although not, Article 19 gives right to common association, but it is not necessary that every association must be given a legal recognition in per se regard. Thereby, Article 19 also is not violated in that regard. Also, right to privacy that they have contested upon Article 21 and in reliance to case Nafte Singh Johar case, in the same case too, the Supreme Court has also highlighted that right to privacy does not include right to marriage. or legal recognition of marriage in per se regard thereby any of the following articles where, uh, where they have contested there is a violation neither of them has been violated per se regard thereby when there is neither a violation of any fundamental rights hence they by approaching before this supreme court under article 32 filing an fpil is not mandatable as in the case of monica and chandler moving on with the pil that has been filed for, by one court movement in regards to uniform civil code implementation now considering what uniform civil code implement uh, code is that there will be a equal law and considering every all the personal laws will be constrained that is a direct violation of article 25 to 28 which talks about a uh, uh, right to freedom of religion person they by implementing uniform civil code in a nation like silver land having diverse religious backgrounds is not feasible or logical and hence as there is a direct violation of fundamental rights as per implementation of uniform civil code which is a directive principles under article 44 and our directive principles are not enforceable there are directions that has given by the article and the some reliance has been placed it cannot be enforced as the fundamental rights can be enforced because fundamental rights are the major rights that has been given to a citizen and article 25 to 28 in that per se regard is very necessary to be implemented and implementation of uniform civil code in a nation of silver land will directly and very graciously infringe the articles 25 to 28 rights that has been granted a lot of thereby it is not feasible to implement uniform civil code and hence in relation to that 
the PIL that has been filed by one code movement is not maintainable. Your issue. Your, if your lordships are uh, satisfied with the arguments of issue one, the council seeks permission to proceed with issue. Yes, yes, yes. Please, please. Read your lordship. Moving on to issue two, that is we are dealing with is relation to recognition of same sex marriage. Whether a same sex marriage should be recognized or not. Talking into placing that reliance, the council humbly submits that same sex marriage cannot be recognized as per the present clause. Firstly, to define that what is a marriage? Marriage in the societal definitions, in the legal definitions, as per the judgments, by various judgments that has been pronounced, a marriage is a union between a man and a woman to place reliance. The council would like to uh, suggest a case of Rima, uh, Rima Agarwal versus Anupam in the, at page 22 of the arguments, dear lordships. What Rima Agarwal versus Anupam case tells that? In that case, the uh, Supreme Court has held that marriage is a legal union of a man and a woman as husband and wife. Same instance has been taken in the case of Mr. X and Hospital Z, where a matter was related to right to privacy in regards to various uh, substances under Article 21. There also, the Supreme Court has held, held that marriage is the sacred union legally permissible of two healthy bodies of opposite sex. Thereby, Supreme Court has contended and very much clarified that marriage is a union between a man and a woman. If we are going to various legal statutes that has been considered, considering Hindu Marriage Act, Hindu Succession Act, Hindu Maintenance and Right to Adoption Act, and Special Marriage Act, that is implication in the present context because in the present context, Chandler and Monica belong to different religions, one belonging to Hindu and one belonging to Muslim religion, placing reliance on that. All these acts profound marriage between a biological man and biological woman. Neither of the acts in that regard place reliance or suggest in any way that there should be a recognition of transgender men or transgender women or any other sexual orientation. Hence, it is very much clear that there is neither a recognition and legal statute as legal statutes are formed and enacted after proper consideration as per the societal norms, as per the requirements, as per the public interest, public mora morality, decency, all the, uh, all the restrictions and all the constitutional provisions in per se regard. Thereby, it is very much clear that before enacting these of the statutes and personal laws, the legislature has considered all the very correct criteria and thereby enacted such laws. Hence, why, because there is not a consideration, thereby it very much clarifies that there is not a requirement. And in the present case, Monica and Chandler are recognized. If they want to recognize the marriage, firstly, their trial is not maintainable. If they want to recognize, they must firstly proceed with the proper court, who has the competent jurisdiction uh, that has been placed as, as per Section 15. Article 32 PL is firstly not maintainable. And secondly, there is no violation of fundamental rights. Because the reliance they have placed on Napte Singh Jor case, Nalsar versus Union of India case, uh, apart from that, but it, the, considering other cases that in same reliance, case put to Sami versus Union of India case, Shakti Vahini versus Union of India case, they, which they have contested upon that right of choosing a partner has been given. It has said that right of choosing a partner in Shakti Vahini case has been given as per the inter caste marriage in that regard. Shakti Vahini case was not regarded as for the same sex gender marriage recognition. It was for the same recognition of inter caste marriages. Thereby, Shakti Vahini case jurisdiction doesn't fall in the purview of present case here. Hence, there is no violation of any of the fundamental rights. And also, there is no recognition that can be given in the present instance here. Hence, the council humbly submitted that in the present case, and as per the current scenario, same-sex gender relation uh, marriages cannot be recognized. The only thing that can be recognized after the judgment of Nabte Singh Jaw versus Union of India is the relationship. And relationship has been interpreted uh, in the Supreme versus Union of India does, is as per the physical living and not the right to recognition of legal marriage. And hence, 
it is very much clear that there is no requirement of recognizing or giving a legal recognition to same sex marriage as per no violation of article 14 article 15 article 19 21 as already contested in various cases and in reliance to that case in that regard the council would like to submit that same sex marriage cannot be recognized okay thank you thank you uh, satisfied with the issue too, the council would like to proceed. Yeah, with it. Also over, and uh, I think um, you have dealt with your two issues. Yeah, the next yeah. speaker will be speaking about the. Will be four and five, five respectively elections. Yes. It was an honor to argue before the security elections. Yes. Your honor, the council seeks permission to proceed with the third issue of the case. Yes, please. Much obliged, your honor. Your Honor, under the third issue, the Council is dealing with the issue which states that does the UCC infringe upon the individual's fundamental and personal rights as protected by the Constitution of Silverland, and does it represent an overreach of the state into the personal laws of its citizens? Your Honours, it is humbly submitted under this issue that implication of a uniform civil code is sure to infringe upon the fundamental and personal rights which have been protected by the constitution of Silverland. Your honors, the same is contended by the council, majorly basing on three grounds. Firstly, that there is violation of the fundamental and personal rights of the citizens. Secondly, there is disregard of the diverse culture of Silverland. And thirdly, your honors, that it would amount to an overreach of the state infringing the uh, doctrine of separation of power. Your honors, under the first ground, it is contended that the uniform civil code aims to apply or cover the areas including marriage, divorce, maintenance, inheritance, adoption, and succession of property. That, your honors, where from para one it could be inferred. Your honors, am I audible? Yes. Much obliged, your honor. Your honors, it could be inferred from para one that Silverland is a very diverse nation. In such a diverse nation where 70% of the people follow Hinduism, 20% of its population follow Islam, in such a nation, applying a common code to everybody, not considering their personal recognition and religious rights is a sheer violation of their fundamental rights. Your honors, it is completely violated of article 14 as there is not recognition of their right to equality. Considering everybody under the single head, not providing them their personal recognition could not be considered as reasonable, your honors. Thereby your honors, Considering everybody equal, the UCC aims to infringe upon their fundamental rights, Your Honours. Your Honour, in the case of Mohammed Hanif versus State of Bihar, the Supreme Court has upheld the validity of the Muslim personal laws. And in that case, the court has also uh, upheld that for the integration of the uh, nation, the personal religious rights of the citizens have to be catered to. And a uniform civil law could not be the only thing whereby the rights of all the citizens could be considered or could be upheld your honors. Further, it also seeks to the violation of Article 15, your honors. Uniform civil code may inadvertently look up or overlook the specific needs and concerns of the minority communities. There are several communities in this nation with several distinct regards and thereby it does not create any single ground whereby everybody or all the religions could come under the specific uh, categorization. Also, your honors, under uniform civil code, it might so happen that there is only regards on the base of the majority community and the minority community's religious or personal rights are completely left out. Thereby, a uniform civil code is uh, uh, ultimately amounting to the violation of their fundamental rights. Your Honours, Article 19 provides them for the freedom of speech and expression. But if in a state a uniform civil code has been applied, 
the minority communities would fear from expressing their views in regards to their religious rights. They would have a fear that if they express, they are not being granted that right, that they would be freely capable of expressing their views in regards to their religion, in regards to their rights, in regards to their personal aspirations and provisions. And thereby, it is somewhere or the other a restraint on the uh, ideas of the constitution makers, your honors, which was not the spirit of the constitution, your honors. Further, Article 21 would yeah, why was it kept in the uh, as one of the guiding principles to be followed by the state, the director principles of state policy? Why? Your honors, uh, um, if that was answer. not the intention of the constitution makers or the drafters of the constitution, why was it kept? Obviously, not inadvertently, but kept deliberately. <clears throat> Your honors, uh, answering to that question, it is firstly to be considered that. Article 40, uh, deep, uh, Uniform Civil Code has been defined under Article 44, which is in Part 4 of the Constitution under the DPSP. And DPSP in itself is not enforceable. Thereby, the Constitution makers, if uh, were in the framework of keeping it as a mandate, would have included it under the fundamental rights, Your Honours. But they were of the aspiration no, no, of... No, no, we, will, we will take it that uh, it, is, it is up to the state. We can ignore it. Your your honors, well. uh, Can you please uh, read article 38? What does it say? Uh, your honors, uh, pleading your ignorance, you were not audible. Sorry for that. If you, you could have please read article 38 before you, your, yes, your honor. Please read article your 38. Honor. What does it your honor, the article, article 38 uh, at the state is to secure social order for the promotion of the welfare of the people. 39 says about certain principles of policy to be followed by the state. So these are basically guidelines. So, Constitution. Let me find out my one. There is some audio issue. Yes, yes. Article 44. The state shall endeavor to secure for the citizens a uniform civil code throughout the territory of India. True, you are very right when you say that these are not justiciable rights. But so, you said something about the constitution framers. They are yes. can, we, can, we, can we ignore it? We may not enforce it. We may not ask for a uh, writ of mandamus. In this regard, but can you ignore it? That is the question. That is my question to you. Okay. Your honors, uh, it could not be uh, at prima facie instance could not be ignored by uh, the uh, as it was as it is included in the constitution. Your honors, but since it has been included in the DPSP, it is left upon the state to consider whether it is a correct situation or not to be applied in a state. In the present situation, your honor, the state of Silverland, it is a state where 70% of the population follow Hinduism, 20% of the population follow the religion of Islam, and 10% of the population follow other religions, your honors. Thereby, your honors, implementing a uniform civil code would not be conceding to their personal rights and would ultimately be violative of the fundamental rights that have been provided. And thereby, under that concern, the state could not be in the uh, mind frame of applying UCC to all those religions that is an okay. infringement of their personal religious rights, Your Honours. Okay. Moving ahead, Your Honours, it is also a violation of their right to freedom of religion as it has been already provided under Article 25 and 26. It creates a sheer violation of their fundamental rights to practice and propagate their religion, where under the Uniform Civil Code, they would not be uh, 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 allowed to practice or propagate their own religion. Your Honours, in that consideration, we can state that apl application of the Uniform Civil Code is a sheer violation of the fundamental rights of all the individuals and citizens, Your Honours. Further, Your Honours, it would amount to an overreach of the state. The doctrine of separation of power clearly states that none of the segment of the government should infringe upon the work of the other. Thereby, if the judiciary has been given this power of stating that uh, uh, uniform civil code should be applied, 
Also, if the state, not in consideration of anything, apply, applies the uniform civil code over all the other religions that are prevalent in the nation, your honors, it would amount to an overreach of its uh, authorities that have been provided to the state. Under that consideration, your honors, it could not be held to be valid. And uh, application of UCC would be a sheer violation of the fundamental rights that have been granted by the constitution of Silverland. Your Honours, uh, the Council seeks permission to proceed with the fourth issue of the case. Yes, please. Yes, please. Much obliged, Your Honour. Your Honour, the Council under the fourth issue is dealing with the issue that is the refusal to give adoption for a LGBTQIA couple a violation of their right? The Council under this issue humbly submits that uh, before the uh, Honourable Court that it would not amount to a violation of their right. Basing upon the following, they firstly, at the jurisprudence of sexuality and homosexuality and sexual orientation. Homosexuality fails to correspond to the basic definition of marriage. As marriage, it has, it has been considered as a conjugal relationship where the couple uh, in the marriage, they uh, exercise their rights of, uh, they exercise their rights of uh, procreation uh, further uh, of the social integration but your owners a hetero a homosexual couple do not have those considerations neither can they procreate but a heterosexual couple only uh, comes under this relationship of a marriage for the attempt of pleasure instead of any attached moral values of the marriage your owners thereby this uh, homosexuality or a homosexual couple could not be allowed to have the adoption rights on the consideration that their marriage is not something which is socially recognized. Their marriage is something which is not in pursuance of the uh, order of the uh, society that has been followed through ages and times, Your Honor. Further, Your Honors, the CARA guidelines under Regulation 5 sub clause 2 specifies that a child could be adopted only if there is consent of both the couple. Also, Your Honor, Section 5.3 of the CARA regulations provides that adoption rights could not be granted to a married couple uh, if they do not have a stable relationship for two years. Your Honors, a homosexual couple could not be considered to have a stable relationship since their marriage has not been recognized by the state. They do not have any rights of succession or inheritance. Further, if they are allowed to give a right of adoption, the child that they have adopted would have no social recognition. The child would have would neither have any financial uh, security in future. Also, the child would be under a societal bar of consideration where the child would not be given the same rights as that of an heterosexual couple because the mind frame under which the child has been reared and developed would be very different from a heterosexual couple's child. Under that consideration, your honors, as my learned counsel for the petitioners had stated, uh, have wrongly interpreted the case of Supriya Chakrabarti versus Union of India, where they have held that the Honorable Supreme Court had held that uh, it provides a validity to the same sex marriage. But your honors, in that present case, of Supriya Chakravarti versus Union of India, the Supreme Court had actually refused to recognize the same-sex marriage. And it was further stated that it is for the recognition of the legislators to frame the same. And thereby, the case, the case has been wrongly interpreted by learned petitioners, Your Honor. In consideration to that, no adoptive right can be granted under the juvenile justice act also there has been no consideration of providing the uh, adoption rights to the uh, homosexual couples as section 57 of the jj act provides for the eligibility of prospective adoptive parents where a solid marital relationship could not be uh, could not be considered to exist between a homosexual couples due under that consideration they have been denied their right of adoption Thereby, it is not at all a violation of their fundamental rights and adoption rights could not be granted to such couples. Your Honours, uh, uh, requesting to proceed with the fifth issue of the case. Much yes, obliged, yes. Your Honours. Under the fifth issue, the council is dealing that 
denial of the life insurance claim to monica on the ground that she does not have a valid marriage certificate is not at all an infringement of her right first of all your honors in consideration to that uh, life insurance uh, claim prevents nomination in favor of strangers in the present case where there is a lack of valid marriage certificate being provided to monica and chandler Your Honours, the council pleads for two more minutes to complete the arguments. You will. I will. I will. I will help you to focus on the point to answer. So, how could you accept the policy? How Your could Honours, you accept the policy the in favor of that person, whatever that name is? How could One you accept that? Time. Now, is it? Oh, will you not be stopped to turn around after having accepted the policy, the premium, and suddenly when the man dies and the nominee comes forward? With a claim, you suddenly turn around and say that uh, you are not uh, entitled to be uh, a nominee. Is it not uh, blowing yeah. hot and cold at the same time? Your Honor, answering to that question, uh, under para five of the moot proposition, uh, under para seventeen of the moot proposition, from there we could infer that Chandler had named Monica as a nominee, but not as a sole beneficiary. Where rights of both the nominee and sole beneficiary are differentiated under a life insurance, a sole beneficiary has a complete right under the document provided, but a nominee does not have the same right and claim as that of a sole beneficiary. And in lack of that vested interest of the nominee, the life insurance companies have a ground to deny the claim. Also, Monica not having a valid marriage certificate is considered as a stranger in the present case, and life insurance claims could not be provided to a stranger uh, in regards to the integrity of the insurance claims. But the stranger can be treated as a nominee. You, you could accept as, you could accept a stranger as a as a nominee. No, your honors, uh, a stranger is completely barred from being uh, accepted as a nominee or a sole beneficiary. Thereby, yes, under yes. that. He has been accepted as a nominee. Your Honor, that is a, uh, uh, that is a consideration gather, of the. No, from what I could gather from uh, the arguments made before me, she was a nominee. Your Honor, that is the uh, sole contention of the uh, council that she was named as a nominee, but not as a sole beneficiary. Where being named as a sole beneficiary, she would have been given the sole uh, rights of being granted the life insurance claim uh, that was uh, being uh, uh, done by Chandler. Uh, with regards to the life insurance, but since she was named as a nominee, she could not be granted, as their marriage was under the Special Marriage Act, and there a civil, uh, which is considered as a civil contract. And in regards to that lack of a marriage certificate, in regards that their marriage has not been solemnized properly in re uh, in relation to all the rights and duties that have been provided to the couple, thereby your right. honours, their marriage could not be considered as valid. All right, all right. So that's it. That's it. That's all. That's all. You are requesting to proceed with the prayer. Yes. Very much briefly. obliged. Wherefore, in lights of the facts stated, issues raised, and arguments advanced, it is most humbly prayed and implored before the honourable court to issue an appropriate order declaring the PIL filed by the petitioners as not maintainable. To issue an order declaring the same-sex marriage could not be legalized. Further, to issue an order declaring the UCC uh, would infringe upon the individual's fundamental and personal rights. Also, the uh, non-grant of the adoption rights is not a violation of their fundamental rights, and the denial of the NIC claim to Monica is uh, is not an infringement of her rights. Further, to pass any other order, uh, relief or claim as it may deem fit in uh, equity, justice, fairness, and good conscience. You know, the council. I would, I would like the organizers to kindly enlighten me with something. How can a respondent make a prayer? Uh, in radio lordship, sir, I couldn't. Uh, is, is, is it is it permitted in moot court competitions? I don't know. Yes, 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 indeed. In radio lordship, sir, prayer is to be made by the petitioner. Whoever approaches the court, he has to make a prayer. Now the respondent has to, uh, I mean, uh, submit contrary to the prayer, isn't it? Indeed, your worship. But as far as the uh, as per the customary practices of the moot court competitions, it has been over time. So that is the. Uh, I must be wiser now. I must be wiser. But these things do not happen in the court. 
Anyway, so everything is over. What next? Your, your lordships, they are having five minutes for the rebuttals. The petitioners are having five minutes for the rebuttals, and the bro, bro, brother, are also having five minutes. Brother, I have a suggestion. Yes, brother. Uh, I I believe we shouldn't cross the time limit. Yes, yes, a little bit. We have uh, both since the first uh, the petitioners were allowed uh, two three minutes. Uh, they yes. were also allowed. Now now they are uh, rebuttal rebuttal evidence for five minutes. It's a rebuttal. Okay. Indeed, you are sir. Indeed, you are sir. So five very minutes. Both the teams have. Minutes, very very very. There will be only one speaker. Um, indeed, 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 you are sir. As per the rebuttal of the court. Quick, quick, quick. Ah, uh, no, in rebuttal, all the speaker will speak. No, uh, no, no. Your Lordship, as per the discretion one of the court, but okay. it is allowed to one speaker. Right. right. One, one speaker okay. will be asked. Okay. Quickly, very quickly. Okay, brother. Okay, brother. Your Lordship, yes. uh, the remedy seek by the petitioners asking can only be answered by this honourable court. Uh, honorable judges of this apex court apex court and we have sufficiently proved the burden levied upon us as petitioners but conveniently our learned friend from the other side has circumlocuted the uh, to argue not on the merits but to mislead the concerns of many your lordship when in article 15 the uh, definition of sex was selective reading to mis uh, selective reading of such a definition was done to mislead such a court And the case laws that were levied out by the Supreme Court cannot be only seen in the consonance with the facts, Your Lordship. Counsel gave uh, to substantiate such a issue, which was dealing such as right to marry under uh, right to uh, uh, choose a partner, is a certain right which was under Article Twenty One, which was given under various courts. So that was for the substantial effect of such arguments. And Your Lordship, here counsel has. Uh, Your Lordship's Council has laid out case laws where court dis discuss the right to choose a partner, and Your Lordship, marriage is an institution, an institution which guarantees mutual benefits to a couple living in a society to recognize their relationship, but only to take away their benefits that welfare the society should provide is a, is the same thing as cutting the wings of a bird and forcing it to fly, Your Lordships. History is witness that there is just one sentinel on the quay wheel. That is this honourable court, your lordships. And your lordship, whenever there is a conflict between constitutional and social morality, always the constitutional morality will prevail. And when the petitioners in the current case have a right under uh, such a uh, constitutional morality, and that should be respected better than the social morality of the uh, existing uh, persons. And your lordships, the transgender persons in heterosexual relationship can marry was a precedent in certain superior judgment. It is transgender person in a heterosexual uh, relationship. Your lordships, that was Monica, who was a Muslim transgender woman, and Chandler, who was a Muslim, uh, Hindu transgender man, were in a heterosexual relationship. Your lordship, they were transgender uh, couples, but. they were in a heterosexual relationship because of their sex which is the biological sex which is adhered in the um, various cases and various uh, personal law statutes your lordships and your lordship the fact that the marriage certificate required was required by the insurance authorities was only not being issued by the state authority itself your lordship they are denying a claim due to uh, their mistake the uh, such claim was denied your lordships That's all the petitioner would be rebutting here, Your Lordships. All right, all right. Thank you, thank you. I think that's it then, Mr. Panda. Uh, indeed, Your Lordships, uh, they have completed within five minutes. So, as for the permission of the court, we shall move. We may move to the uh, uh, rebuttal, sir. Rebuttals of the respondents. If the honourable courts. Is there a rebuttal or a rebuttal? Sir, rebuttals. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, anyway, yes, you are allowed. Please proceed. Your honours, your honours, the council seeks permission to proceed with the sir rebuttals. Please, please proceed. Your honours, as my learned petitioners have uh, contended, your honours, in the present case, there is involvement of the personal right of Monica and Chandler, and in that consideration, moving before the Supreme Court under Article Thirty Two could not be considered as maintainable. Your honours, they are still being provided with alternative remedies. to proceed with and in consideration to that applying uh, the uh, jurisdiction before a supreme court is not the whole and sole uh, uh, authority that they have been left with 
Further, your honors, Article 15, they claim that there has been a selective reading. But your honors, uh, there has not been a selective reading as Article 15 provides for the restrictions. And in the case, LGBTQIA community, there is sexual orientation and grounds of uh, the, the grounds have been clearly been provided in the case of in Nalsa judgment, where sexual orientation was only been considered then it could be violative. But in the present case, your honors, the rights have been infringed on the basis. And it is also said that UCC could not be applied in consideration to the minority rights. You're not only conceding to the majority rights, therefore, it could not be considered to be violative of Article 15. Further, your honors, they have uh, uh, stated that marriage is a mutual recognition between the LGBTQIA community. But here, your honors, the LGBTQIA couple are not to be considered in a marital relationship, but else they are been considered, their relationship is been considered as a union. And this segregation between a marriage and a union provides the sole basis for non-recognition of their marital relationship, your honors, which is not provided under any of the provided laws. Also, your honors, constitutional moralities, as has been laid by them, they also provides for the provision of rule of law, which has been completely upheld by the state in the present case in uh, regards to the non-application of UCC and also in non-grant of the rights uh, of uh, non-grant of the adoption rights to the LGBTQIA couple and thereby constitutional morality is in no way infringed. Also, your honors, there is again a wrong interpretation by the petitioners of the case of Supriyo Chakraborty versus Union of India, where it was a, with a three is to two judgment. The Supreme Court had clearly stated that same sex marriage could not be uh, held as valid. And further, the, uh, they could not be granted. The queer couple also could not be granted the adoption rights. Under those uh, circumstances, your honors, there has not been a violation of any of the fundamental rights of the citizens and UCC could not be applied. That was it oh. by our side, your honors. Yes. Much obliged. That is it, Mr. Panda. I think. Your Lordships, uh, now I request uh, Prabhu Prashanna Bera sir to please uh, uh, convey the uh, vote of thanks of today. Uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, it's an honor and privilege to uh, ex get the opportunity for extending a uh, sincere vote of thanks to the two of the eminent personality of Indian judiciary who has been inspiring all of us as an advocate as uh, junior advocates, as law students. So I think it is a privilege on my part to extend my sincere and deep sense of gratitude to my Lord Honorable Justice Sasikant Mishra and my Lord Honorable Justice Sibo Sankar Mishra sir for gracing the occasion and encouraging the participant. I would mention the vast experience in the legal practice from the subordinate court to the apex court and as an eminent personality in the field, in the other side of the uh, of the court, as a district judge and then as a judge of the Honorable High Court of Orissa, he has been inspiring, he has been guiding from his aura, from his legal acumen and ermine service. is none other than my Lord Honorable Justice Sasikan Mishra, sir. Of course, I should mention the my Lord Justice Mishra's uh, acumen and contribution to social, legal and education, legal education coupled with spirituality and literature. Most of us are also inspired with Lordship's liter literary work who has, and Lordship has given his kind consent and valuable time to us. My Lord, we are extremely thankful and grateful for your Lordship's kind presence. And I thank on behalf of Dr. Aso Kumar Mahapatra Memorial Mood Court Committee and all the organizers for your kind presence and gracious uh, presence and time for making this event a great success. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I, my Lord Justice Sibo Sankar Mishra has a great experience, vast experience in the field of practice in the Apex Court. And we all know him for his mentorship for his encouragement to the juniors who has helped uh, many junior lawyers in establishing the practice in across the country from in legal education and empowering the bar and encouraging the law students. We always 
come to know the students those who have interned in the office of my lord justice mishra uh, has always mentioned his uh, encouragement his involvement with the legal education my, uh, probably we would, we would not have got any other better person than my lord justice sibo sankar mishra as the judge of this court to encourage all of us my lord on behalf of dr ashok kumar mahapatra memorial moot court com committee i express my deep sense of gratitude and thanks for your kind presence and valuable time my lord and thank you very much said, as it is said namaskarana tashanti gurubha with folded hands with with the with the feeling of namaskar namaskar there was little inconvenience we we hope and we believe your lordship would excuse us and bless us so that our organizers mostly it is being organized by the students so your lordships will excuse us for the inconvenience and we will definitely we are trying to develop the skills of management along with the legal education and uh, 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 we are encouraged to part uh, continue in the legal profession once again i thank your lordships for your kind presence definitely your lordship's presence and valuable time has made this event a great success with with permission of your lordships i would like to extend sincere thanks to the judicial officers those who are present and that is because because your lordships have graced this occasion they are interested to hear and to be part of this event i extend the judicial officers and the senior advocates advocates law students and law teachers those who are witnessing through uh, google meet and through the uh, live telecast being done from the official youtube page of abinishio law institute i extend my sincere thanks to all of you for making this event a great success thank you thank you very much thank, thank you prabhu sir for the kind of error sir for your uh, kind and valuable words sir, and motivational words thank you thank you sir that's all the participants uh, you may leave the result will be announced as stated in the brochure thank you over tadi jo sir